Ms. Thomas, why do you feel like you need to speak to the committee to clear your name? Thank you for being here. Did you speak with your husband about your beliefs of the election being stolen? Thank you for your question. I look forward to answering the members. You just watched Janae Thomas, wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, head to the January 6th committee panel where she'd be giving her testimony. Now, judging by the shit-eating grin on her face, this is a woman who has absolutely no concern that she will be held accountable. She wasn't going to answer any question from the reporters, and she just walked by with a big smile on her face. Yeah, doesn't seem like she's concerned. I think that deep down, she's probably a little bit rattled, but she knows when you have that much power, when you have that much clout, when you are the wife of a Supreme Court justice, you're going to be OK. You're going to get away with whatever laws you may have broken. But that wasn't the only time when reporters asked her questions. She very clearly didn't want to speak to the press because she got out for a second, presumably to take a break and then went back in. They asked her more questions. But as you're going to see, she wasn't budging. Ms. Thomas, do you still believe the election was stolen? Ms. Thomas, how did the session go today? Are you done for the day? Are you coming back? You speak to your husband about the uh, election and your conversations with Mark Meadows? Ms. Thomas, what have you talked about during your testimony? Nothing. And she had the same shitty and grin on her face that entire time. And I think that honestly, this sounds really mean to say her smile is going to give me nightmares. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm just being honest here. There's something about that woman. She has she like a demonic a demon. presence around her that makes me feel very uneasy. And I'm not a believer in demons, but there's certainly a demonic presence. There's some bad energy around her. And I think that part of that is just this entitlement. She believes that she can get away with doing anything she wants. She literally tried to overthrow a democratically elected president. And she's just walking around with a smile on her face, ignoring reporters. So she was asked, you know, when was the last time you talked to Mark Meadows? Do you still believe the election was stolen? And she's not going to answer these questions. Her lawyers were with her. So, of course, they probably instructed her to not speak to the press. But I mean, things like this, this is why the Supreme Court has lost its legitimacy, because we have a Supreme Court justice whose wife is a literal insurrectionist who did not recuse himself when it came to cases that actually may implicate her. We have this court who's gone rogue and they're implementing their theocratic minoritarian views on everyone. And as a result, well, people have lost faith in the court. So according to Gallup, trust in the judicial branch is at a historical low and a strong majority of Americans disapprove of the job that the Supreme Court is doing. Also, a plurality of Americans think that the court is too conservative. Now, that's just Gallup. Earlier this summer, a Marquette Law School poll found that the approval rating of the court dropped 22 points within a year. So the court is deeply unpopular and widely seen as illegitimate by most of society for good reason. But according to Alito, you're not supposed to say that the court is illegitimate because that's just a little bit too far. That crosses the line. Quote, it goes without saying that everyone is free to express disagreement with our decisions and to criticize our reasoning as they see fit, said Alito, one of six conservatives on the court. But saying or implying that the court is becoming an illegitimate institution or questioning our integrity crosses an important line. Oh, does it now? Questioning your integrity crosses an important line. I mean, the audacity of the Supreme Court justices, you chose to make this court a partisan institution. Republicans chose to politicize the court by stealing effectively two Supreme Court seats from Democrats. And then you now are dropping these decisions that are deeply unpopular on society, knowing 
that it makes the court look clownish because you're disrespecting what was largely viewed as super precedent. You've given up the facade of impartiality and you're not even trying to make it seem as if you have these guiding judicial philosophies that you're using to reach these conclusions. You're just handing down reactionary opinions and you're finding some thinly veiled judicial philosophy to um, you know, legitimize your rulings. But the American population, they see through it by and large, and that's why you are illegitimate. That's why your approval rating is at a record low. And also, it doesn't help that you have individuals like Jenny Thomas, who she's the wife of a Supreme Court justice who is using her clout and proximity to power to crush democracy. This is why people have lost trust in this institution, because it absolutely is illegitimate. And anyone who views it as such, well, they see it for what it is. If you don't want to be viewed as illegitimate, do better or better yet, step down so actual legitimate judges can be confirmed.